Greetings and welcome to the World Numismatic News and to a new series where we'll be exploring type coins to see how each series evolved over the years and how their designs have changed with time. This is the evolution of the US half cent coin. The half cent was one of the first coins issued in 1793, shortly after the US Mint opened its doors and was struck on an on and off basis until 1857 when the denomination was made obsolete and subsequently deleted from everyday commerce. Not counting known die varieties, in total you will need 6 coins to complete a half cent typeset collection. The first of these is the Liberty Cap half cent where Liberty is facing towards the left. This coin was issued only in 1793 and is an extremely sought after type coin as it was not only the first year of issue but a single year type coin as well. It is estimated that of the original mintage of 35,334 coins, around a thousand or so of those coins survive to this day. The obverse has the flowing hair liberty head facing left with a Phrygian cap, also known as a liberty cap on a pole slung over her right shoulder. The word liberty appears above with the date just below. The design is surrounded on both sides with a beaded border. The design was adopted from or inspired by the Libertas Americana medal, minted in Paris more than a decade prior. The reverse design consists of a wreath tied with a large ribbon at the bottom of the sprigs with intermittent sprays of berries, an element that is unique to this issue. United States of America appears between the border and the reef and half cent inside the reef in two lines. The denomination is further indicated by a fractional 1 over 200 appearing in exergue. Finding a coin like this is not impossible but it is expensive. In the absolute lowest of grades, a coin like this would fetch around a thousand five hundred dollars. And I mean grades of fair two or one, literally as low as the Sheldon scale goes. In ranges of VF or F, you can all looking at numbers of closer to ten thousand dollars. And prices increase steeply from there. In January of 2018, an MS65 brown example, a coin that is tied for second finest known for this type, was sold at auction in a PCGS slab for the sum of two hundred and forty thousand dollars. Then in 1794 the obvious design was altered so that Liberty would be facing right instead. The overall design aesthetic was maintained, however it is also worth noting that Liberty's head is considerably larger in relation to the size of the coin when compared to the 1793 issue. The beaded border of the 1793 type was then also replaced with denticles instead, both on the obverse and reverse here. At first glance, the reverse looks basically the same as well, but the sporadic berry sprays were removed from the reef, which is now also tied with twin loops in the bow instead of a single loop. These coins are also called the facing right large head type to distinguish them from the small head facing right coins issued from 1795 to 1797. And in all fairness I should mention that there is some debate as to whether or not this should in fact be a full type or merely a subtype of the facing right design overall. Both arguments have merit but I feel that there are sufficient differences to warrant calling this a single year type coin. And while on the topic I should also mention that there is a subtype for 1794, known as the low relief and high relief heads. Uh, the easiest way to spot the difference is to look at the hair as indicated here. Of the original 81,600 coins minted, it is estimated that around two to two and a half thousand of these coins are left surviving today in all grades. In this case, an entry level coin can be had for around three to four hundred dollars with a slightly better grade where you can actually see the coins design elements hovering 
around the $2,000 mark. It's been a hot minute since a proper high-grade coin like this has been seen on the open market. But in 2017, a PCGS-graded AU58 example was sold at auction for $16,450. And at the 2009 Central State Show, we saw a NGC MS65 brown coin raising $103,500. $500 at auction. And then the Liberty Cap Half Cents final redesign took place in 1795 and would remain in use until 1797. Not, of course, counting the large number of varieties and subtypes that also exists for these. The only major difference here is the fact that Liberty's head is noticeably smaller when compared to the 1794 facing right design, hence the name facing right small head type. Over the three years that this design was in production, just shy of 270,000 coins were minted, with an estimated survival rate of around 10 to 15 percent, leaving a rough estimate of around 4,000 or so coins available for collectors today. The exact value of this coin type will depend on the date of issue that you manage to track down. However, in general, around $500 should net you a very low grade example, with around $2,000 or so a more reasonable grade. This is another case where high grade coins are almost never seen. Although at the 2018 ANA show in Philadelphia, a PCGS graded MS64 Brown example was sold at auction for $96. There were no half cents produced in 1798 or 1799. But then, in 1800, the denomination made a triumphant return with the draped bust obverse design, a design which was first seen on the silver dollars of 1795. The half cent coin would use this design until 1808. On this design, the profile portrait of Liberty is again facing towards the right. Her hair is swept back and tied loosely with a ribbon at the back, while the majority majority of her cascading tresses fall loosely back over her shoulders. The design derives its name from Liberty's dress, which appears almost as a cloth draped across her shoulders and chest. According to some accounts, this portrait was adapted from a sketch by Gilbert Stewart of Philadelphia socialite Anne Willing Bingham, whose father, Thomas Willing just so happens to have been the first president of the First Bank of the United States, which was the contemporary predecessor of sorts to the modern Federal Reserve. The reverse design, however, was left essentially unaltered from the previous type. According to Mint Records, between 1800 and 1808, 3,416,950 coins were minted for circulation of this type. And it is estimated that between 35 to 40,000 or so of those coins remain available for collectors today in all grades. Overall, though, is especially if you are simply assembling a typeset, then this coin remains fairly available in most grades. A low-grade example will reasonably cost around $150 to $300. Mid-range examples should gain you around $300 to $500. And again, it will depend on which date you choose. But if you go for the cheaper options, then you shouldn't have to pay more than this. Mint state grades do, however, become a little more scarce at times. But unlike the previous coins discussed here, red, brown, or even coins with red mint luster can still be obtained if you have the cash. In 2019, an MS63 red graded coin from PCGS was sold by David Lawrence for $21,750. And then in 1809, a new design made its debut, today known as the Classic Head Half Cent. It would be minted until 1837, but would see large gaps in the timeline where no coins would be minted at all, most notably between 1812 
and 1824, no half-cent coins were produced. Then again, in 1827 and in 1830, the same. For the obverse design, Liberty again faces towards the left, on a half-cent coin for the first time since 1793. Lady Liberty has curly hair that is tied off with a broad ribbon, which has the word Liberty inscribed thereon. The date appears below, and 13 six-pointed stars flash her on all sides, seven from the left and another six towards the right, representing the original 13 colonies that signed the Declaration of Independence. All this surrounded by a denticled border. The reverse also made some changes. Most notably, the reef is now formed from a continuous sprig with no gap, tied off at the bottom with a single ribbon. The fractional 1 over 200 has also been removed. Of the the original combined mintage for the series as a whole of three and a half million coins. Most estimates put the surviving number of coins today at around the 45,000 mark. Low-grade examples can be had for really less than a hundred dollars, with mid-level circulating grades can be gotten again for around a $200 mark. Again, it does depend on what date you choose, but something like an 1809 had a larger mintage and is readily available today. And for a typeset, that works just fine. Even mint state coins are seeing prices of three to four thousand dollars each. Of course, exceptions do exist, and in 2014, a PCGS graded MS63 Brown 1811 classic head half cent was sold at auction for $82,250. By this time, the half cent was thoroughly unpopular in circulation. In fact, as early as 1829 already, Mint Director Samuel Moore wrote to Senator Sanford of New York that the half-cent coin was not being ordered by banks, post offices or the private sector, and that if half-cents were sent in place of one-cent coins, that complaints would inevitably follow. And so, stockpiles of this coin grew steadily each year upon year in government vaults. By 1840, a new design would debut on the half cent, although it was seen a year prior on the one cent coin already. Although, if you were looking for this coin in circulation, at the time, you might be forgiven for not even knowing that it existed, as there were no coins minted for circulation until 1849, with 1840 to 1848 being strictly proof only issues for inclusion in proof sets or for sale to numismatists and collectors. The denomination would be minted in small quantities until 1857, when it was scrapped completely. The obverse of the braided hair design featured a more compact portrayal of Lady Liberty, again facing left, but this time wearing a diadem with the word Liberty across it. Her hair is tied back in a bun secured with a beaded string. Thirteen stars are evenly spaced around the rim, which is completed with tightly spaced denticles. The date appears in its usual spot just below. The reverse remains largely the same, except for the line underneath scent is removed on this design. For this design, again, a mere 544,510 coins were struck for circulation across its lifetime, and about 10 or so percent of that figure is estimated to have survived to this day. The coin is fairly obtainable, despite the low mintage overall, with even the highest circulating grades selling for less than $100. Of course, which date you choose will impact the price but with the higher mintage figures of 1851 and 1853 would be the cheapest in general. During 2018, an MS65 Plus red graded 1855 half cent coin from PCGS was sold at auction for $14,687. Although this is an exception rather than the rule itself, as most mint state coins for this issue should sell for a mere fraction 
fraction of that amount. And that, in a nutshell, is the half cent series. Every major design change and everything you should know to complete a typeset for the denomination. Subscribe to WNN and activate notifications with the bell icon so you'll know when new videos are released. For the world numismatic news, I am Numisman saying thank you ever so much for watching. Keep collecting and have a fantastic day.